Good morning, everyone. I trust you all are having a great day. Well, let's just make it even more better. Let's learn something new today. What we are going to discuss today is a very important aspect of effective communication. And to be a great leader, one must possess this skill. The skill we are talking about is assertiveness. Does that ring a bell? Well, few of the question which this house might be having today, what is it? Well, yes, I know about it, but I just know it theoretically. I'm working on it practically, but looks like I have burnt my finger. Or how can I be better at assertiveness? Let's try to address all of these questions one by one. Before we take these questions, let's understand what assertiveness is. Every individual human being has some of their needs. And the party, the individual or the group they are interacting with, they also have their needs. So it's something, a very common ground between my needs and your needs. Well, if we take Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary, expressing your opinions or desires strongly with confidence so that people take notice. You need to understand without violating the right of others. This is very important part of assertiveness. So you should have the ability to communicate your needs, your feelings, your opinions, your beliefs in a very open and honest manner without violating the right of others. Let's move further. I'll give a very simple definition for this. It's a middle ground between being a bully and a doormat. Nobody loves a bully and nobody also wants to be a doormat. So this is place where we come and tell you how to hold that middle ground so that you can express yourself confidently. Now you must understand when we talk about assertiveness, it is a, certainly not a guaranteed way to win every argument. What we are not telling you is that you will win every argument. However, what we are telling you is you must be able to express your views in any argument if it is required. You must also note, it's certainly not telling everyone everything all the time. You should take care of the situations, which we will discuss further. I'll give you some practical examples later on. There are four major communication styles. One of them is a passive style which generally says like, I lose, but you win. The second one is aggressive style. It's completely opposite of being passive in which I try to win, whereas you lose. The third one is a passive aggressive style. Passive aggressive is certainly where I also lose and you also lose because my rights don't count and neither do yours. Whereas the fourth communication style is assertive my rights count and so do yours i win you win so the situation of any communication should be that we both should win and assertive comes over there and the motto over here is the the person practicing assertiveness have self-confidence he has belief in himself and he also value others he knows that he should be able to express himself. However, you sh he should be a wonderful listener as well so that he can understand others point also. Now in this communication style, he's very much active listener. He's effective. He knows his limits and expectations and he makes sure that he states them during the communication. The very important characteristics are that the persons are generally non judgmental they are confident and very decisive because they know what they want. Now, how, how their behavioral aspects are. They operate from choice, knows that what is needed and accordingly they develop a plan. They are action oriented, firm and just. And that's what you look for in leader. Now, he takes appropriate steps towards getting what he or she words without denying rights of others. So this is very important part of the discussion. How can one become assertive? How to begin about it? 
let me break it in steps for you step number one you have to be consciously aware that you want to be assertive and to that now this is the hardest part you should be giving yourself permission to say no to ask for help and to make mistakes now when i say and if you are new to the assertiveness i would suggest do it among your very good friends and family and let them know that you are trying this exercise this will actually help you a lot because i don't want you to get into a war zone without your proper training and then get killed what i mean to say is you be in your office environment with your colleagues or maybe your superior and when you try to be assertive you might if without practice you kind of mess it up so and look like a bully so what i say is start easy start in your personal circle let them know that you're trying it and when you start feeling comfortable about it you move to the next stage please note the second step and the second step we tell you about like there are four types of assertions the very basic assertion the, f- the first one is it's a very straightforward expression of saying i want this or i feel this kind of a statement the second one is one level up empathetic assertion where you are taking a recognition of other person's situation and feeling which is followed by a statement where you stand up for your rights it's like uh, i know you have been really busy but i want you you know i want you to know that my performance is important for you and the team so i would like to plan for my performance review so this is a communication where you are talking to your supervisor and telling empathetically that though he is busy but you would really like his time for your performance review citing that this is a very important task for both of them the third type of assertion here is escalating assertion this occurs when a person fails to respond to your basic assertion and continues to violate your rights for an example uh, if you don't complete the work on my car by 5 pm tomorrow i will be forced to call the better business bureau now this has happened because the mechanic has already missed one deadline now you really don't want him to miss another deadline which he has committed to you so you have to go firm about it and you have to escalate your assertion over here now the fourth one is now this is very important i language assertion we call it the fourth degree assertion you they, that's further divided into three parts the first one is you describe the behavior the second one is you describe the impact of the behavior and the third one is you put down that what you want in this the important part is uh i'll i'll give you an example uh, there is a there was a colleague of mine who recently joined the organization and i would say he was a very active guy but what i felt he wasn't proactive he would always come up to me and ask for the questions and i felt these were very simple questions and had he tried little bit looking on google also or let's say on the 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 website for the company he would have find them easy so he used to eat up a lot of my time in the beginning i thought he needed some time to set up with the organization so i was helping him out but it became a kind of a routine for him and it was eating a lot of you know valuable time for me so i said uh, uh, look mike this is i really want to help you and you have been coming from the last you know one month to seek help on these issues uh, but uh, uh, this has eaten up a lot of my time and i have this assignment to complete so will it be possible for you or can you please go and you know look at so and so place and try to work it out and if that doesn't work probably we can set up some time and we can book a calendar and something and we can figure it out now 
I really didn't want to because this was the first time I was telling him. I didn't want to go very harsh on it. But if he would not come to terms with it, then I might have to escalate it later on. You remember escalating your assertion? We just discussed. Now let's say he didn't even listen to what I said and then after a week he comes again. If it's not a genuine query, again I would have to say, look Mike, I have told you earlier, but this seems not to be working again. Okay, guys, uh, we have been talking a lot about the assertion, but we need to understand this is one of the concepts in your communication. Now, communication skills remains very important point. Like you have to be comfortable, you have, should have direct eye contact, your posture should be very open and relaxed. And the very important part is your facial expression should agree with your message. Wow! I'm very sad that your mother died. Well, doesn't that look funny? Or that looks kind of weird. I am giving condolences to a friend, but my face expressions are saying that it's a joyous moment for me. So, as I said, your facial expression should agree with your message. If you are giving somebody a strong, stern, a confident message about your uh, thought, please let it come straight. Try not to, you know, uh, put it into a kind of a joke. Because if you make joke of your own feeling, there are high chances that other persons might take it that way also. So sometimes it becomes necessary that you come with your point straight forward without reducing the value of it. Now, uh, the another important part of communication style is that you should have a level, a well modulated tone of voice and the voice level must be appropriate as per the assertion. Um, there is no need to be on a very high note or a low note but depending on the situation and the discussion you have to bring that into the picture. The final step is practice, practice, practice. Now I would suggest you find a mentor for yourself. You can discuss all your early queries with them so that you don't burn your fingers at the early stage. Please make sure in the beginning don't try changing your behavior in a loaded or difficult situations. So you have to practice and when I say practice, they say practice makes a man perfect. I say right practice brings the right perfection. So if you keep practicing the wrong thing, you might bring the wrong perfection. Fine guys. Now, there are some situations I would give it to you. What would you do if you were on a phone and next to you was speaking very loudly and causing a distraction? Anybody want to do a role play? Well, I am going to give you some, uh, some situations right now apart from this. Think over it. Probably after some time, we can have a role play sessions also. Another situation is you are having a face to face conversation and the person you were talking to interrupted you twice within the first couple of minutes of conversation. You are leading a meeting and someone insists on either talking about a subject not relevant to the meeting or is dominating the amount allocated to meet. You are the leader of the team and you are having difficulty motivating one of your team members. Probably he is not interested or probably he is being distracted too much. We'll talk about these situations later on, maybe uh, after the theoretical session, when we meet in person. 